What's going on YouTube? This is Jim Fanis, aka Viper Magic, and today I want to bring you some Bloodborne boss tips and tricks. I'm going to be throwing down against the first boss in the game, the Cleric Beast, who is a great introduction to all things bosses in Dark Souls or Bloodborne universes, as many of these bosses have very similar mechanics, and although they're all incredibly difficult, there's a few key things you can do that I'm going to tell you about right now that are going to help you out significantly in your battle. Now, as you're watching my video, you're going to notice that I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on a few things. But you know what? <laughs> He's dead in my game, so damn it, I'm okay. <laughs> but if you're having a problem with this guy or any other boss, fear not. I have a few things from my years with Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, and now Bloodborne that should help steer you in the right direction. First and foremost, you always need to be locked on. That is an absolute no-brainer. You really should always be locked on when you're just in general exploration mode, not in a boss. Locking on gives you situational awareness first and foremost, but it allows you to dash quickly to the left or to the right instead of rolling away. And this is really important, especially when I talk about the next tip, which is to always go to your left or right not backwards. You just saw right now what happens when you run away. You think that you have enough distance between you and the enemy where you can take a quick health potion, you can reassess the situation, and re-engage. And you're going to be wrong every single time. Why are you going to be wrong every time? Because bosses have an uncanny ability in these games to close the distance extremely fast. And there you see right there the Cleric Beast who was a pretty good distance away, not only got close to me, but jumped completely over my head. He couldn't clear half this bridge in a leap. I've seen it done on my many failed attempts before I took my own advice and strafed to the left and the right. Don't go backwards, don't backpedal. The only time it makes sense to backpedal is if there's an area of effect attack on the ground, I call it poop, that you don't wanna step in. Other than that, you need to be on this guy's ass like my boss, okay? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to leave get distance between these guys. And I think that in and of itself is the best strategy. Now, health potions. This is tip number three. Health potions, you're going to use a lot. And I drink these son of guns like they are going out of style. However... Running away and backing way up in the corner to drink a health potion, no bueno. What you want to do is you want to circle around and replace one of your regular attacks with a potion drink. That makes sense. So you're going to circle around and like, oh, I'm going to hit him. No, I'm not. I'm going to drink. And this may seem weird because there's going to be times that your health bar is a fraction of an inch long. And you know if the boss sneezes on you, you're going to be blown into next month but that's kind of the risk and reward of Bloodborne's combat system. And that's why your character can leap around so fast. You don't want to retreat, drink potions, think about it, and re-enter the battle. What you want to do is be in his face at all times, constantly moving to your left and your right. And a good time to use your health potion is when your stamina is low. Now, if you've really got it on lockdown, you probably would never need a health potion, but let's face it, none of us are immortal. <laughs> And uh, you're going to need to use these things quite a bit. You don't want to do what I'm doing right now and drink and then run back in. Because most of these bosses also have a very strong opening attack. Now the Cleric Beast will swing his arms wildly in front of him. Other bosses will uh, shoot rapidly and swing rapidly. And I'll do videos on those later. But again, these bosses are meant really to get behind them, expose their weak points, and time when you want to circle, strafe and time when you want to dash to the left and the right. I didn't use any firearms in this. I actually just shot one just to try it. I was very unsuccessful with shooting him with firearms. Maybe people are a little better than me. The reason why is the boss changes his advancement speed from very fast to very slow, and it's very hard to get a good read and a tell on when he's going to be lunging at you and when he's not. As a result, you'll find that you're going to shoot your blunderbuss or your handgun too quickly or too slowly if he leaps in and you weren't expecting it, you're obviously too late on the draw. And if you let him leap across from you and you pull the trigger too quickly, you're shooting and doing minimal damage and you're exposing yourself for just getting blasted. So 
I hope these strategies come in play, and I hope you think about them when you play through this game. A lot of the bosses will have this mechanic. And I'll do more videos, like I said, and I will show you time and time again why this strategy works. As always, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are on boss battles. Do you have a strategy that I'm not aware of? I'd love to hear it. Until then, I and the Bloody Hunter will see you guys on the other side.